year, fans waved a fond farewell to the cast of the longest-running British comedy programme ever, Last of the Summer Wine. It was first shown again in 1973. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Over the years, many people developed a real soft spot for the characters like Compo Clegg and Nora Batty. Of course, and as well as the characters, fans fell equally in love with the rolling Yorkshire landscapes that provided the show with its iconic backdrops. Uh, for the next instalment in our series, Real Locations, Juliet Kaplan, who played Pearl, paid a visit to Holmfirth to show us around. Two thousand and ten saw the last ever episode of the Sunday Tea Time stalwart, Last of the Summer Wine. Set in the rolling Pennines, Homefirth is a real place which offered the BBC everything it needed to produce this long-running series. This is no fictional town. Everything from Nora Batty steps to the building that became Sid's Cafe were known to the locals. For thirty-eight years, the series featured characters that the audience began to know and adopt as family members. Foggy, Compo, Clegg, and the inimitable Nora Batty. What's this? An apology. What for? For what I am about to do. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet Kaplan played the character of Pearl for over 25 years. Having been booked to do one scene in one episode, I was over the moon to be cast as a regular. What the dickens are you doing? Well, it's just precautions in case of fire pressures. You scare people to death, you dozy monkey. But there's a forgotten character who had as much to do with the show's popularity as any of the actors. The village itself. The rural village of Homefirth provided the perfect backdrop for that heartwarming comedy of three old codgers who really should have known better. Now, which one to be poor? How about none? That's a good idea. With the show running for so many years, the town became heavily involved with the actual production. And there are some people who actually grew up with the show. Summer Wine came along at a time when the town really needed it. Was this the time when the textile industry was really collapsing and it brought us a new industry, which was tourism, and it really changed the face of home first. What's your very first memory of the filming? The first memory is the, this gentleman pulling up at the side of the road asking me way to a uh, hotel. And later on I found that it was billowing. Really? Here's someone that'll get your dynamo going. In the first few years, we didn't have caravans. It was only the three men. So we'd have to sit out either on these walls or maybe in somebody's car. And it would start to snow or rain, but we stuck it out. They were more concerned, really, about the costumes. So the costumes had to be protected, and the wigs. So we'd have rain hats and an umbrella, and we were freezing. Freezing temperatures aside, Homefirth is full of beautiful buildings, like these 17th century weavers' cottages. As you venture further into the village, you come across what are arguably the most famous steps in television, the steps leading to Nora Batty's cottage. How come you're still interested in women at your age? I think it's because they're the only opposite sex we've got. <laughs> Local businessman Neil Worthington and his wife Nicola purchased the cottage to house his growing business. But whilst renovating, he realised the significance of what he'd bought. So we started gutting the house out. Uh, and we had a skip outside, and the tourists started coming taking bits out of the skip, bits of wallpaper, bits of memorabilia. And I thought, that's going to be sacrilegious, this, if I convert Nora's cottage into, uh, into a design studio. So then we thought, well, why not rent it out as an experience? Like, for example, things like, say, East Enders, you can't stay at the Queen Vic, or Coronation Street, you can't stay at the Rover's Return. Mm. But the most iconic house in TV comedy, the fact that you could stay in it for a weekend and have a complete Norabati experience, that was the, the plan. It was an opportunity because tourists come to sort of home for Earth to kind of make it available to other people. I asked for a tour of the cottage, but I wasn't quite prepared for the steep stairs. I don't know how Nora coped with those. But there was a fantastic photo halfway up. <laughs> Me. We never, we actually never filmed in here. We recreated the yes, sets. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we've... in London. But you've made it 
exactly as it would have been Absolutely, yeah. We've, had Nora Batty lived here. We've got a lot of the photographs that we've recreated it from. Uh, a lot of the props that you'll see were used in the actual set. Really? Uh, down in London. Yes, like the, the lamp there yes. and the, the Welsh dresser. It's recreated as, as, as authentic as we can, as we can well, get it. Well, it really looks um, as though it's come yeah. straight out of that era. EastEnders has the Queen Vic, Coronation Street, the Rovers, but with the green gingham curtains and white frontage, Sid's Cafe is no less iconic. When we were filming here, the audiences used to flock to see it, and they thought it was a real cafe. So instead of using it as it was, a paint store for the ironmongers next door, the owners turned it into a real cafe. What's up with them? I don't know that there's anything. I think he's always like that. <laughs> I just wish he wouldn't be like that in my establishment. I suppose that it was easy to get customers in because of the show. Mm. Most of our customers are d do come here because of last of summer wine. So they're, they're and looking friends. around, I can see that you've kept up the traditions. Yes, yeah. I mean, we wanted to keep it as it was. I know it's a bit set in time and, and not very modern and trendy, but I think that's what people expect. So, how did you cope when they were filming here? Weren't they a terrible nuisance? We, it was just meant an early start, so we mm. don't normally open until 10, but on filming days, the crew would be here at 7 o'clock in the morning, and they're so efficient, they'd, they'd be gone by 11. So, <laughs> what are your memories of filming? I remember one time, actually, when I was 18, and my mum and dad live up the hill, yeah. so I was walking down um, to go to college and BBC were filming and were like, you can't come through here, we're filming. And I'm thinking, I've got to come here, I've yeah. got to catch my bus to go to college. So I just sort of strode through. <laughs> so what did you do when he said he was going to join the Legion? I packed his suitcase. Hello. I want you to promise never to be as friendly as that with me. If anybody could get it wrong, you could. Filming on Last of the Summer Wine may have stopped, but the beautiful village of Homeforth is still very much alive. This, being the location of the world's longest running comedy series, will keep people coming back to visit for years to come. Back to Sunday nights. Oh, we're sitting around with the family. Didn't want to go really to school the next day. Full so up from that music, music as well. How brilliant is that music? Oh, no, it's lovely. Mm.